Hello, welcome back to another video. My name is Zach. It is Super Bowl Sunday, and we are proud to announce the major release of version 1.0 of Raytha Content Management System, the .NET open source based content management system. As part of the 1.0 release, the major headline feature is the release of a headless mode combined with our integrated content management system mode. So now we support both headless and integrated modes as part of Raytha. The headless mode is an automatically generated open API spec and swagger user interface for you to do uh, create, read, update, and delete actions, the standard CRUD actions against your content that you set up in your API. And that's what we're going to do in this video today. We're going to set up the headless mode with our content, get an API key, and start hitting the API uh, in just a couple minutes. It doesn't take much time at all. So let's jump into it right now. We have a fresh installation of Raytha ready to go. I'm on my local host right now. Uh, to get an API key, all you have to do is go to your admins and edit an existing admin or create another admin specifically for the purposes of using the API. It really depends on your preference, but we're just going to edit myself right now and go to API keys and then click create API key. I'm going to copy and paste this API key uh, locally because once you click away from the screen, you're not going to be able to retrieve the API key because the API keys are hashed in the database. So make sure you save them in a secure location. So I'm going to copy and paste it into the Swagger user interface for the API. And what you can see here is that I'm at slash Raytha slash API. So if you just go there, it's going to take you to the Swagger spec for the API documentation for your own Raytha installation. And I'm going to click authorize and paste in the API key here. We're going to come back to this in a second, but you can see it says X dash API dash key for the header. That is how you're going to make API calls uh, from any code or no code tools, things like that, if you need to. So we're going to authorize and click out. And just to test it, I like to go to ping, which is almost like a health check. We're going to click try it out. And then we're going to click execute. And we know it worked because it returned success is true, the version number that's currently running, and our organization name. Let's look at the API a little bit. We're going to scroll back up to content items. And what you can see is we get a get on all the content items for, but you have to specify the content type developer name. And if we go back to the admin portal, you'll see that we have two content types. These are the default content types that Raytha comes with out of the box, but you can create your own as well. But if we click on pages, for example, and then if we click on configuration, you'll see that our developer name is pages. And when you create a new content type, you can specify what the developer name is at that time. But here, this content types developer name is pages. So I'm going to go back here and we're going to expand out this get request, click try it out and type pages and execute. And we get the two pages that we have here as a JSON response, the same pages that are shown here. But let's create a new page through the API and see what that looks like. So we're going to just uh, close that one up and then we're going to go to post, which is how you would create a new one. And we're going to click try it out again, do pages for the content type developer name once again. And here we see that it kind of pre-populates with a sample payload. Save as draft means that it's, it's going to be saved in draft mode, but not necessarily uh, published, but we do want, we, we don't want to be saved. We want this to be published right away, uh, right to the public website. So to do that, we're just going to change that to false. If you want to be able to review it on the back end and then publish it later, then you would save that as true. Now the template ID is interesting because we need to specify the default template that this page should uh, be tied to. Now there's a couple different ways of getting the template ID. Uh, you can actually make an API call to the web templates get request. You can try that out and get the, get the ID of the one that matters to us. Um, 
Another way is to go into the admin portal and go to templates and find the one that you're looking for. Click edit and then grab that portion of the URL and paste it in. So we're just going to use that naive method for now. And as far as content goes, you need to put in the fields that map to the developer names of the fields you have on the content type. So if we go back to our admin portal, go back to pages and then settings fields, we only have two fields on this content type. And you can see the developer names are conveniently listed right here. So we have title and content and you can see the field type that it is as well. So we have uh, title and content or one's a single line text and one's a long text. We're going to come in here and we're going to say title. Content and remove these. Hello world title one. Content. OK, and that should be enough. So let's go ahead and click execute. OK, we got a bad request, a 400 bad request. It says the JSON content contains a trailing comma at the end. It's not supported in this mode. And you can see that I did have a trailing comma right there. Let's fix that. Execute again. And we are good. We got the result, which is the ID here. And we can actually use that ID to make another get request for the item itself. You see here is the next get request content item. We'll click try it out. And we can type in pages, paste in the content item ID, and we get the content item back. So we see all that happening right here with the headless mode, but you can always go back in here. And if we refresh this page, we see that it is published right in the user interface. This is obviously great. And it's really convenient to use this Swagger user interface to kind of experiment with the API and test it out. Uh, but you could use any REST client. There's no reason why you can't use a typical REST client. Here's Boomerang. So let's create a new request. And we're going to make a GET request here. This is helpful because it gives you the curl command. And the API key is the header. Let's hit send and there you go. There's obviously a lot more you can do with the API, uh, like updating, deleting records, uh, looking at the actual content types that are there. You can actually post media items too, uh, but as well as working with user accounts. So that could be a homework assignment for you guys. Uh, take a look at the API documentation that's available. And if you have any questions, please post in the GitHub discussions. So we're going to wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed the look at the REST API of the Raytha content management system. It allows you to interact with content within your platform to and fro the API. So go ahead and check it out. Raytha is a completely free and open source content management system for .NET developers. It allows developers to rapidly build and deploy new websites and applications. It's super convenient. So go ahead and check it out at Raytha.com. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this one in the future, go ahead and subscribe. Really appreciate it. And uh, other than that, I hope Kansas City pulls out a victory today over the Eagles. And have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.